approximate the area under the curve f of x equal to 1 plus x squared over the interval from 0 to 2 using the trapezoid rule with n equal to 4 trapezoids. Once I get my approximation, I want to find a bound on the error using the error rule that goes with the trapezoid rule. So, to start off, let's sketch the graph of our function and what the trapezoids look like. So first off, f of x equals 1 plus x squared. This is a parabola facing up. If I take the derivative, I'll notice that the critical point is at minus 1, so we don't have to worry about this thing bowing down under the x-axis. Its minimum is going to be out here, so this is just going to be a connect the dots. I figure out that f of 0 equals 1, f of 2 is equal to 9, and then I can connect the dots. Now, we want to start drawing in trapezoids, so let's take a look at what we have. I want four trapezoids, so that means for the base, we're going to take 2 minus 0 and divide that into four equal pieces. So each of these bases will have length 2 minus 0 divided by 4, or 1 half. With that, we can start putting in points to get trapezoids. So I'll have 0, base is a half, goes to 1 half, goes to 1, goes to 3 halves, goes to 2. So we know where to draw on the bases. I draw in the vertical lines at each of those points. These heights are just going to be given by evaluating f at each of our points. And then we can draw in the tops just by drawing the straight lines in. Now we notice each of the tops are going to be above the function. So when I get my answer, I know I'm going to have an overestimate for the area. We go to the trapezoid rule. What this says, take the base, divide by 2, and then the rule is take all the heights. The heights on the outside are just going to be left alone. The ones in the middle, we double, and then we add all that together and multiply by base divided by 2. Okay, I put my numbers in, which I probably crunched with a calculator over here. And so that's going to wind up giving me 35 over 4, which is 8.75. So we know 8.75 is going to be an overestimate. It will be a little bit bigger than the area. Let's check out the error rule. For the error, we pretty much have to either look up or memorize this formula. So what we're going to be given is you take the base, the entire base, so that would be 0 to 2, but take its length and cube it, divide by 12 n squared. Here we have n equal to 4 trapezoids. Then we multiply this by the max of f double prime, absolute value. Here, for f, the first derivative is 2x plus 2. Second derivative is f double prime equal to 2. So we don't have to worry about the max. This thing is going to be 2 no matter what we put in. So I wind up with 2 cubed, 12, 16 times 2 which gives me 1 12, and then the error is 0.08, and then the 3 goes on forever. Let's see what the actual area is. We know how to do that using a definite integral from the first fundamental theorem of calculus. So what we're going to do is we take the antiderivative of 1 plus x squared, then I'm going to evaluate that antiderivative at 2 and 0, take their difference. So the antiderivative of this will be 1 plus x cubed divided by 3, that you can get using a u substitution. Then evaluating a 2 and 0 gives me 9 and minus 1 third. And so I'm left with 8 and 2 thirds. The actual error, we're going to wind up with 8.75 minus 8 and 2 thirds gives me my 0.083 going on forever. And so you know that the error rule is actually going to be sharp in this case. This is the largest error that we could have, and we actually wind up attaining it. Now the question is, should you memorize the trapezoid rule? Well, if you have Simpson's rule on top of this, I recommend just keeping the trapezoid rule as a picture that you can work off of, and hopefully that'll spark what the actual formula that comes out is if you need to. 
Okay, so note, the area of a trapezoid, in our case, it's going to be take one half times the base, and then take the sum of the two heights. In this case, delta x is your base. The heights are going to be just f evaluated at two consecutive points, say xi minus 1, xi. When I take the sum of all these, you'll note that these terms here are going to telescope, meaning Okay, well, we could pull out the one-half and the delta x. But as I go across, we'll notice that the first point stays as it is. And then as I keep going across, consecutive terms are going to be the same, which is where the 2 comes from. We go all the way out. We'll notice that the last term doesn't have another term that goes with it. So the first and last terms have no 2 on them. All the ones on the inside do.